often say this on the show, but it's always wonderful to share insider royal news. And particularly, you know, when you want to try and set the record straight, because there are so many stories out there about the simple things that the royals do that get misconstrued and put out as, you know, negative stories and all that sort of stuff. I mean, over here, let me explain, our current British Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, really will never live down the fact that he's on record claiming he wouldn't mind a republic, you know? Suddenly, as I've often said, you get offered the sir and suddenly you suddenly like, of course, the wonderful British monarchy. Nobody really buys it, do they? But it's stories, of course, that really confuse people, in particular this, because earlier, as we know this year, it was the wonderful Olympics in Paris and, you know, so many people did so well. Of course, the opening ceremony was a little bit, shall we say, not to everybody's taste. That's by the by. We'll have a quick wave, by the way. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you so much. Slacking, I know. This is the problem. Yeah, well, you know, lost in thought. You know what it's like yourself. You're not enough. I can see that. You need to get with it a bit more, you know. There's a problem when you relax, isn't it, for a minute. You think, oh, just close my eyes. And there you go. I know. We're all the same deep down, aren't we? Now, let me get back to your story, because as I say, the Olympics in Paris was a wonderful event. I thought they did very well. And of course, anybody who wins anything, I just think you're terrific. The dedication, the hard work and the endless hours of, you know, really turning up in the midst of winter, learning your skill all for a medal really should be commended. So well done to everybody who came away from that. And if you didn't, don't worry, at least you got there, didn't you? You have to say that positive thing. But what we learned about the Paris Olympics was this from none other than His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, Prince William. On an event recently, he pointed out the fact because he was getting blasted in the media about not attending why didn't he go over all of that sort of stuff and a similar thing happened of course when the ladies football team did very well and then we found out later there was a real reason why he couldn't attend and the reason was simply this as he let slip not I don't think by accident in a conversation he said well apparently you see he couldn't really turn up to the Paris Olympics because Covid was still rife and he didn't want to put himself in danger, not for himself, but because of his wife, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, obviously was going through chemotherapy and he didn't want to come back with any bugs or anything like that. So very quietly and just in an informal chat, he let the world know that was the reason why he didn't attend. However, the media decided to blast him, not supportive, the usual stuff. I just, you know, when you think about it, you do need to cut people some slack in this world. It's a little bit like this other royal story about none other than His Majesty the King, King Charles III. Now, sources tell me that, as you already know, Buckingham Palace is going through an extreme renovation and it's going to be costing thousands, but nothing's really been touched in there for many, many decades. Apparently, the last major thing was in the 1950s upon the arrival of our brand new monarch at the time, Queen Elizabeth II. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, what's going to happen? No royals want to live in there. I've been told this, and I don't know what you think about this, but following the opening of the private residence up in Scotland, the beautiful area of Balmoral, which is a spectacular area if you want to relax, well, they were sort of testing the waters how that would go. And as you know, it proved to be very successful, a sellout. Even the afternoon teas at £100 plus were a big sellout. And according to that source, King Charles is very keen to see how this could sort of transfer over in the latter parts once the renovations of Buckingham Palace have been completed. Now, people might say, oh, it's, you know, you can't do that. It's Buckingham Palace. People want to nosy round. There's no difference between that and a major museum a lot of history gone on in Buckingham Palace, people would be keen to pay and the real payment will then go back into the upkeep of this wonderful venue. A venue that's sort of synonymous with royal events, the, you know, the balcony, everything like that. So while people may attack Charles again, I would say think on both sides. It could be a good thing or indeed a bad thing. We know our late monarch wasn't too keen on opening up the palaces, but this is a different time and a different reign. Is he right to make it self-funding or should it all come down to the British taxpayer? Either way, as ever, I'd love to know what you think to these two particular breaking royal stories. Neil Sean in the very heart of Yorkshire.